Nice. Get rid of this. Alrighty. YouTube friends, what is going on? David E. back, brand new video today where we were talking about branded dock work, right? Is it a gold mine or should you pass? If you've been looking to broaden your scope of work, right, trying to get into different uh, genres or different niches, and if you thought about branded documentary work, I think you should stick around for this video. If you took a look at Netflix, HBO, Amazon, right, Peacock, Hulu, a lot of their top rated shows are actually documentary shows, right? Documented, documentary limited series or reality documentary shows. And with a fairly diverse background myself in documentary work and branded documentary work, I wanted to give you guys my tips when it comes to um, working in the branded documentary space, as well as working with clients and talking to clients uh, in regards to having them be on board with branded documentary work. So let's talk about you know the client engagement, right? When you're talking to a potential client, a potential lead about branded documenting work. If you look at their website, you look at their Instagram content, you look at their, you know, if they have a YouTube channel or a Facebook page, if they don't have any type of branded doc work, chances are they may uh, be in one of two boats, right? Number one is they don't really want or need branded documentary type of uh, content for their audience, for their brand. Or number two, they had just never, you know, thought about branded documentary work. And if you're going into this conversation, it's uh, it's a hard sell, right? Meaning that you have to pitch them this brand new idea and it's a 50-50 chance that either they're going to say, you know, yes, or they're going to say no. So before pitching to a potential client or potential lead for a branded documentary, you know, three minute long uh, video, five minute long video, right? Get to know the client, look at their um, look at their website, look at their uh, body of work already when it comes to video content, uh, maybe even like still photography, right? Look at their Instagram page, see if they're already doing any kind of like storytelling through still pictures. If they're at least doing that, that gives you a better opportunity to pitch them um, branded documentary content. But again, not every business, not every client wants or needs branded documentary type of content for their business, for their platform. Now, that being said, there are times where a client, again, just doesn't know that um, the branded documentary type of content is even on the table, right? Maybe the past production companies or agencies or agencies that they worked with, they've uh, steered them away from branded doc work, or maybe they have never even, you know, just brought up the uh, the idea or the concepts. Um, but again, if you look at their work and you see, if you look at their Instagram, if you look at their portfolio, you kind of see that maybe they do want um, branded documentary type of content uh, during your discovery engagement with the client and when you're asking them questions. If you if it feels like they actually want short form content, or right, if you're kind of getting that vibe from them, then definitely put that on the table as far as, hey, um, would you guys be interested in branded documentary work? Because it sounds like you guys are really involved in wanting to tell your story, wanting to tell the other uh, brand story and the uh, customer testimonial stories, right? That's a good avenue of approach. Now, moving along into the actual uh, you know day of or even pre-production uh, mode for branded documentary work, on the day when you're working with a field producer or if you're working with a director, ensure that you're capturing moments that you can build into a story, right? Moments could be someone waking up in the morning, uh, maybe their daily routine is to uh, drink coffee while they're reading the newspaper, or watching TV, watching the news, and perhaps you're looking to, you know, really get more intimate with this person. So that that's why you're at their house, you're at their apartment or, or a studio, a space, wherever it is, right? You want to be able to capture um, these moments in the beginning of the day. Maybe from there you move on into their commute to work, whether they ride a bicycle or they take the train or they take the bus or or they drive their own uh, their own means of transportation, right? You follow them along. It's it's very verite. It's very doc you follow, um, and then from there, once they get to the place of business. Maybe you get shots of them opening up the gate or you know rolling up the gate. Uh, could be them unlocking the door, walking in, turning on the lights, right? So on and so forth, where you want to be able to build a story that has a beginning, middle, and an end. Now, I know some of these uh, tips you probably already know. Maybe you've been, you've been already shooting branded documentary work for a couple years. Um, but again, if you're just first starting out and, and you're looking to get into branded doc work because you love documentary work and you see the potential and the uh, the, re the reward for branded documentary work, again, these are just beginning tips, right? Now, moving on, if you aren't sure of what type of shots um, to get to help tell a story, and the first piece of advice is to actually do the interview first, right? The interview is going to give you uh, pretty much all of the framework all of the 
types of shots or it's, actually it's gonna give you like your own shot list of what to get based upon what the person is saying. Maybe they're talking about a specific part of their business or place of business that really means a lot to them. Maybe um, there was a, there was a gift that was handed down to them by, by a customer that really meant a lot to them, right? Um, if you're in their house, you're in their, their place where they have um, kind of like personal memorabilia, memorabilia. if they're talking about, uh, you know, back in college days, you know, this happened, that led to this, and that inspired me, right? Maybe you can break out like their little photo book or their yearbook and, and, and capture um, sort of like our OTS credit card shots of that. Um, and you'll be, able to, uh, you'll be able to create a meaningful and inspiring story. Lighting wise, right? Branded documentary, a lot of them kind of just look okay, right? When it comes to the aesthetics or the cinematography, right? Because a lot of times with branded documentary work, you're working in a situation where you can't um, set up lights, right? That's just the nature of uh, documentary work. Now, there are times where you can set up lights or even projects where you can bring on a gaffer, you can bring on um, a whole grip team, right? And you, you have like the, uh, the fixtures or resources to make things look good. Uh, in a situation where it's just you or maybe you just can't bring any fixtures at all because you're working really fast, um, my best piece of advice is always to look for a backlight if you can. Another tip, I think this is like tip number three or four, I don't know, I lost count. Uh, another tip is to always have a shotgun mic on your camera regardless if you think you're gonna use it or not for actual on-camera audio. Uh, I can't tell you how many times there's been a situation where a director or a field producer has asked, hey, can we get this this, this quick little sound bite? Hey, can we get this um, quick you know, run and gun interview? I, and you have like no lavaliers left, right? They're already on talent that they're like back in the house or in the garage working on something, right? You don't have any more lavas left. Um, having a shotgun mic on your camera may not be the best quality audio, right? And again, it may not be the best, but it's better to have that than just like the in-camera audio uh, from your camera. Now, coverage-wise, right? Coverage is probably gonna make or break the aesthetics or the cinematography for your branded documentary work, right? A lot of times when we're doing like verite, docu-follow type stuff, it's a lot of like 50-50 shots, it's a lot of two shots, it's a lot of uh, super, uh, you know, hard profile like, you know, profile shots um, because sometimes that's all we can really get. But if you can start to um, treat your coverage like like a narrative form, have your um, have your have your two shot right. Say there's two people talking, two people talking, right? And you're getting your wide, right? You're getting your medium shot. You're getting that 50 50 shot. But then going for coverage, right? Because they're probably going to be talking for at least a little bit of time where you can sneak over to one person's shoulder, get that OTS, and then you know maybe 30 seconds go by, 45 seconds go by, a minute goes by. It just kind of depends on the nature of the conversation they're having, right? As time goes by, again, a minute or whatever, then you start to slowly creep around and walk over to the other person's shoulder, right? Um, a tip when it comes to, to sort of like running gun interviews is if you have a really good director or a really good field producer, they're going to be standing next to you, right? So that way, that way the eye line Right, the, the talent or the interviewee's eye line is close to the camera, right? So like, you know, say instead of, if the director is over there, right? Then you're pretty much, you might be shooting this way many times, right? You might be shooting this way. But if, if, if that director is smart, and that field producer is smart and they and they understand why you're there, maybe because there's really good backlight over here, right? Then they're gonna wanna start to swing autofocus and they're gonna wanna start to swing towards uh, or be next to you. So that way the eye line is a lot closer. Um, wide eye lines are, are, you know, they're wide line, they're wide eye lines. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm no, uh, what's it called? Um, I, I've, I've used wide eye lines plenty of times um, before, but my, um, my style or taste, I guess, has transitioned more to closer or less, or, or less wider eye lines, right? Because then it feels like that person is talking to you, right? They're talking kind of towards the camera this way or, or this way, right? Rather than talking way out there, right? Because it kind of takes you outside of the conversation, so to speak, where you're like here. Um, and when you have a tighter eye line, then now you're more closer into the conversation. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Hopefully, if you did, leave it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as always, just so you know if I have new content coming out. Remember, this is the last, these are the last, what is it? It's the end of October, November, December. You got two more months and two more months. That is it. No more YouTube content ever. So if there is something I have or something that I can bring value to you, uh, type it down below and I will see if I can make that uh, video for you guys. And as always, remember you have a opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee. I'll catch you guys in the next video. That was weird, huh? I'm sorry.